Praise the Lord. Come on, let's stand tonight. And we want to welcome you to our Victory Hour Chino, the Mother Church, Firepower and Prayer Service. Come on, let's give Jesus a hand. And if you're tuning in, we want to welcome you. We have a powerful service in store. But at this time, we want you to join us as we worship the Lord together. Come on, let's give God some praise. Come on, church, did you come ready to praise the Lord tonight? Can somebody shout hallelujah? That was it. Oh, yeah. 
worship you, Lord. One word, yes, you are. Oh, I want everybody to see. There's nothing worth more. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. It's in your presence, your presence, Lord. See, I've tasted and I've seen. I've tasted.
sing, I'm sorry. And I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions. I'm sorry when I just sing another song. Take me back to where we started. says in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy in the presence of the Lord there is peace in the presence of the Lord listen his power is there tonight and if you want more of the Lord like that song is saying I want you to lift your hands and for the next 30 seconds begin to worship him begin to tell him how great he is begin to magnify his name with your with an audible voice tonight and watch Watch his presence, his power, his peace, his favor, his anointing begin to fill your life. Come on, just, just a few more seconds. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. We need you, Lord. You're our peace. 
us, oh God. You're our joy tonight. You're our provision. And we thank you. We thank you tonight. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else will do. Come on, lift your hands. If you have a need, if you have a need in your life, lift your hand. And we're going to go before the Lord. His presence is here tonight. And we're going to lift up your knee. Whatever it may be, we know that God is able to do more than you could ever think, ask, or imagine. Beyond what you could ever comprehend. Father, tonight we lift up every single need. We lift up your people, whether they're here in the sanctuary or whether they're viewing online, God. And we know that you're able to do the impossible. Father, we ask you to move on every behalf of petition of your people, my God, for healing, Lord, for provision, for peace, for joy, whatever their need is, God, family, marriage, we know that you're able to do more than we could ask and or imagine. And we ask right now, Father, more than anything, we just want your presence. We want more of you, God. And we know that when there's more of you, Lord, we know that we're, nothing could stop us. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your provision, for your favor and your mercies upon our life. And we know that you're going to do great things on our behalf. And if you believe that tonight, I want you to give God that biggest praise that you could give him. Come on, we serve a big God so we could give him some radical praise. Look at your neighbor and say, listen, if you ain't going to praise him, I'm going to praise him. If you ain't going to sing, then I. If you're viewing from at home, we know that God is moving right there at your home too. And listen, we want to welcome you tonight to Victory Outreach Chino, the mother church. Come on, give Jesus a hand of praise. On behalf of our pastors, Pastor Sonny Jr., Sister Kim, we want to welcome you and, and all the ministerial team here. And if there, is there any first-time guests that you're here for the very first time? We just want to welcome you. If that's you, we want you to lift your hands. If you're here for the very first time, oh, look at right here in the front row. God bless you. Good to have you here. There's a few hands going up right there. Good to have you. God bless you. But at this time, listen, you could air five. You could just, you know, we want you to go ahead and greet one another in the name of the Lord. We are family here, and we love to greet and fellowship. So as they play this song, and as Pastor Joe comes, we are going to greet in the name of the Lord. the Lord. Let's give Jesus a good hand clap tonight. We're going to pick up our tithes and our offerings tonight. United we can. So if you need an envelope, go ahead and lift your hands. The ushers will go ahead and get you an envelope. And how many know that it's good to be in the house of the Lord? Can you say amen this evening? And um, one thing that I've learned is that everything comes from the Lord. Amen. Everything that we have comes from God. And here in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, very, very good scripture here. The Bible says this, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to gain wealth. And how many know that everything that we have, it's only because God gave it to us. Can you say amen? Can you say amen? You know, that job that you have today, it's because God opened the door, right? Remember, we were praying and asking God to open the door, and God opened the door. And so because he's moved on our behalf, then, then what we got to do is that we got to be faithful. And that's what the Bible says. Remember, don't ever forget that it's God, that every good gift comes from the Lord. Amen? 
And one thing about our tithes and our offerings, and those that are online tonight, you could also participate in giving also. There's a link there. You can go ahead and also give. But tonight, we want to remember that God has been faithful, and he's going to continue to be faithful. And as we pay our tithes and we continue to give, then God blesses the 90. Can you say amen? God just requires 10%. The 90 he blesses and the 10th is consecrated to him. And those that give and those that are tithers, they always seem to have. Amen? They always have. Always have enough. And so tonight we want to continue to support God's work because God's people support God's work. And, you know, we, uh, you know, support our men and women's homes and then our beautiful building. Amen? And all the different things that we want to do. So let's continue to be faithful in our giving. Amen. Tonight. And so let's go ahead and pray. We're going to pray for the offering tonight. Father, we thank you, God, because you've been a great God. You've opened doors, God, where, God, no one else could have opened, God, for jobs and everything that we have today. And, God, as we give, God, to our, our church, our tithe, God, united we can. Bless, my God. And multiply, Lord God, and also bless our lives, Lord God, as well. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. We got some announcements that we have, Brother Adrian and Sister Alondra, this evening. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Joe. God bless you, church. Uh, my name is Adrian. This is Sister Alondra. And tonight we get to share with you guys some announcements. So this Friday morning, who comes to prayer? Who likes to pray? Oh. I said, do we like to pray? I, ho I hope so. So this Friday morning, uh, every Friday, we do pray here at the church at 6 a.m. So I want to encourage you, if you've never been and you've never came on now, uh, God is on the move and powerful things are taking place. Um, so I want to encourage you that every single, every single day when we wake up, we should give God his rightful place. I encourage you that. Uh, man, when we do that, that before we get busy with our schedule and everything else, that we put God first. And uh, God is on the move. Special things are taking place. So also this Friday night, tell your neighbor, this Friday night, we have our Victory Outreach Chino softball uh, game that we play. But it's not just any game. We have our championship game at 7.30. And, uh, oh, I need you guys to get excited. I see you, coach. Uh, we, man, we, I, I get to be a part of the team, and uh, we're believing for that W, that championship game that we have. So come on out, bring a friend, and we want you guys to pack out the stands and pump us up and uh, discourage the other team. No, I'm kidding. We want you guys to come on out, and we're believing to bring home that championship here in the house, and maybe we can represent it. Uh, hopefully, we get to win. But also, uh, we want to encourage you to just come on out, bring somebody, and uh, we're believing God for that win. What do we have, Alondra? Amen. This Saturday we are having TYC, Take Your City, Rock the Block. We'll be having six different rallies at six different locations because we are in soul winning mode. We are treasures out of darkness and we believe in reaching the treasures. Come on, can I get an amen? Amen. And if you are a V group leader, if you can please stand. A V group leader. I'm representing the musicians V group. Woo -hoo. So um, if you see these V group leaders, you can connect with them if you have any questions about um, Take Your City, amen? Uh, on Sunday, we'll be having celebration services at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. And right after church, someone say right after church. We'll be having water slides and food boots on the grassy area on the side of the church. And we'll be also be having a backpack giveaway for Super Soak Sunday. And it's a gang in the house. Amen. Gang stands for God's anointed now generation. Come on, we're not the X generation. We're not the next generation. We're the now generation. And this Sunday, we are believing for a move of God. We're believing for souls to get saved at these altars. We're believing for breakthroughs. And we want to invite, I know it's for the game, but we want to invite the whole church. We, because sometimes we just need God. We just need a breakthrough. Can I get an amen? Uh, come on, the presence of God is where we receive the peace that we need, where we receive the breakthrough. I'm, I know I'm believing for my family. And right after that, um, take it away, Adrian. <laughs> yeah, that was my turn. So also, I know we have a lot of married couples here. Throw those rings up, all married, married couples. So we have a marriage retreat. And you guys should be excited for this because if I would, if I was married. 
No, I'm kidding. But we, we should do have, you know, a singles singles retreat or something like that. Maybe, Norman, we could get some, some Stevie Wonder music playing. So the theme is a love that lasts. Tell your neighbor, a love that lasts. Oh, I like this song. So it's a marriage getaway. So I want to encourage all the married couples to come on now and do your best to, uh, you know, try to get those days off. And I truly believe, even though I'm not married, but I truly believe that when we invest in our marriage, we invest, when we invest in those things, that God is able to honor that. And it's, if you think about it, it's not just the now, but it's the future. It's the futuristic events that will take place. You know, when you, when you get married and uh, a marriage should be forever. Forever. And I believe when you do that, when you invest now, that you'll be able to see your kids saved and you'll be able to see God moving in, in, in your life. And not only in your life, but in generations to come. So I want to encourage you that this, this Sunday, tell your neighbor, this Sunday, this Sunday, August 29th, is the last day to register and put it down to deposit. So I want to encourage you, uh, take a loan out, do something, do anything you can, and make sure you put, your, you put your money, you can see somebody back in the foyer after service. And our last announcement is Run for Hope. Tell your neighbor, Run for Hope. And we're still in Run for Hope mode, so I want to encourage you to uh, do all you can. for Everything that we do is for world missions. Man, this music is getting to me. Everything we do is for world missions. And so I want to encourage you that uh, do what you love. That's the theme. So I know that before we used to have things where we just all have, you know, we would tell people, hey, sponsor me for Run for Hope. And they're like, well, man, what is Run for Hope? But we get to do something we love. So if you love to uh, lift weights, then you could do that. If you love to eat, you can also do that. I know Pastor Phil's going to do Climb for Hope. So there's so many different things that you could get a part of and do. So get creative and uh, tag team up with us. And uh, here at this time, we have some video announcements. So if you go, go ahead and pay attention to the screens at this time, God bless you. Hi, I'm Gabriel. And we want to invite you to our Victory Group. We're experiencing revival in the city of Ontario. We're not just a group of people that meet on Saturday. We're a family. We call each other. We hang out with each other. We fellowship with each other. We cry with each other. We pray with each other. And if you have any kids, we'd love to have them out. We have an awesome kids game. Yeah, we meet every Saturday right here. We hope to see you. But I still have things that have not been completed yet. And I can't wait to see God unfold these dreams and visions. To me, being a leader is someone that's called of God to pour out into the next generation. To care for people, to love people. To have integrity, love, and to be selfless. A leader is somebody who is willing to take risks. To take those around you and just lift them up to God. To live as an example for this upcoming generation. To be someone who's willing to put others before themselves at this retreat that you will not leave the same. But I pray you'll have such a hunger for God that when you go back, that you're going to revolutionize your church. Praise the Lord, Victory Arch Mother Church. Are we still excited here tonight? Okay, that was good, but are we still excited here tonight? I learned a long time ago that when we come to the house of God, we should come expecting. Say expecting. And I truly believe without a shadow of a doubt that God wants to do something here tonight. I, I truly believe that. And we've been having dynamic services every Wednesday night, uh, the summer of harvest. We start off with Pastor Ray's testimony, powerful. Also Brother Gonzalo. And last week we heard from a couple, uh, Brother Spencer, Sister Chantel. And tonight I get the privilege to share my testimony and um, I pray that God would just move here tonight. Amen. Everybody bow down and close your eyes. Father God, Lord, we thank you for your beautiful presence that's here. I pray, Lord, that you will increase and that I will decrease and that you will anoint my lips, Lord. Use me as your vessel, as your mouthpiece, Lord. And I pray that we will not leave this place the same. That when we leave this place filled up on fire, filled up and ready to do what you have called us to do. As the ministry of victory, right? Thank you in advance for what you're going to do. We give you all the honor and we give you all the glory. And the church says, Amen. and the church says, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You could turn your, if you could take hold of your Bibles and turn to 1 Timothy chapter 6. We're going to be reading uh, verse 11 through 12. And as you're turning there, I want to thank God for my salvation. How many people are grateful for their salvation? Grateful for what has God has done in and through your life? I'm truly grateful. God rescued me, he saved me, he changed me, and 
we'll get more into that here this evening, but I'm grateful for my salvation. I'm also grateful for the founders of our ministry, Pastor Sunny Senior, Sister Julie. I'm grateful for our founders, pioneers, making sure that we're keeping the vision on the forefront. And you can see that God is moving still all over the world. I know that our founders, along with our pastor, they were just there recently in the country of Panama. We're building a base there in Latin America. And you can just see expansion, explosion taking place there and also all over the world. And so I'm grateful for our founders. I truly am. And um, how many love the shepherds of the house, Pastor Sunny Jr., Sister Sister Kim, our pastors, shepherds, they truly love us, and um, we truly are blessed with the best. We truly are great, sincere leadership, and thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. I, I don't take it lightly, and what I love is they're so heavenly invested into making sure that this third wave comes up the right way. I'm, I'm grateful. We come from a great lineage, the first wave, the second wave, but now this third wave. And I pray that we just come up a humble generation, an open generation, and that we also honor the leaders that have gotten before us. Can the third wave give an amen here tonight? Amen. Grateful. Also for the God's anointed now generation, the gang, my product of the gang, proud product of the gang. And last but not least, my beautiful wife, Sister Alexis. We've been almost six months married. This is a radical gang girl. Thank you for all you do. You are such a blessing to me. And the title of my message here tonight is The Heart of a Champion. Say the Heart of a Champion. The Heart of a Champion. There in our text where we're going to be start reading, it says, verse 11, chapter 6 says, But you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Verse 12, fight the good fight. Say the good fight. The good fight of faith and take hold of the internal life to which you were called and when you have made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Now, in this passage, we have the Apostle Paul writing to his disciple Timothy. And he's telling him, man of God, be different from those who live for riches or material wealth. He was to flee from proud arguments of those who misuse God's word and who, who suppose that we should follow God just for what we can get out of it. He tells Timothy to pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Instead of pride and riches, Timothy was to make these things his pursuit. These are things that are which are often not valued in this present age, but are very valuable to God and very valuable to hear us here as Ministry of Victory Outreach. And he tells them to fight the good fight of faith, to go God's way and against the flow of the world. How I many know we're in this world, but we're not of this world? He tells them it won't be easy, but therefore Timothy had to have a, a soldier's determination. A soldier's mentality. You see, God has called us to be fighters, but to fight the good fight of faith. You see, it, it's a good fight. It means that there may be some times where we lose some rounds here and there, but that we will carry on this fight with great determination until the fight is over. Where we will lay hold on to eternal life. You see, Timothy, he was drafted into the army of God to which you and I are also called to. But Timothy also volunteered. He confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Timothy had to consider both and to set his thinking right for this fight, that God had called him, and he had to freely be chosen. The Bible says that many are called, but few are chosen. See, we're all called to do great exploits for God, but you and I have to make the decision to be chosen. Can I get an amen here tonight? That's the decision we have to make here tonight. We, we have to make the decision, do we want to be champions? You see, there, there are pretenders. Pretenders, they just look the part. They, they're willing to put on the gloves, but not to actually want to get into the ring. That means that they'll love to hit the heavy bag, but as long as the heavy bag don't hit them back. <laughs> We also don't want to be contenders. 
You see, the contenders have the ability to be great, to be champions, but are not willing to go the extra mile. Or do we want to be champions here tonight? See, champions are people that are persistent no matter what comes their way. And that they will not lose heart and that they will press towards the mark. So tonight, convince me here, do we have any champions in the house? Well, do we have any champions that are going to make the decision to fight the good fight of faith? Say faith. faith. Say faith. faith. Now to go into my testimony, I was born in the year of 1992. 1992. I know I'm making some people feel old here tonight. Um, I used to love with, to mess with Pastor Tim Argonzoni. Because I knew he graduated high school in 1992. And so I would tell him, what year did you graduate high school? He said 1992. Oh, like, oh, that was the year I was born. I would just remind him periodically. <laughs> but if you could turn, um, show the picture. First picture, picture number one. That's me as a, as a baby looking at me and say, ah, Young little white boy. <laughs> that was a true story. My dad, he would look at the crib every day. To see if I got a little bit darker. <laughs> no lie. Day after day, he still doesn't look like me. He still doesn't look like me. Maybe we got the wrong baby. <laughs> but I also, I grew up in the church. See, my dad got saved in the year of 1987. And I'm grateful for that because of that decision. That's where my parents met. And five years later, I was born. If we could show up picture number two. Now, this picture is taken in La Puente, in um, Sister Julie, Julie's kitchen. That's um, my sister Cynthia, my dad, my mom. It's me and my two sisters, Gina and Jade. And I'm sure there's some OG kids gang teachers that are recognizing that little baby and recognizing that's the one that caused terror in their classrooms. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> But you see, my early memories of church consisted of falling asleep in the seats during all-night prayer and the real all-night prayer till 5 in the morning. Right, Brother Ramsey? I would just tell my parents, wake me up when the pandusa is ready. <laughs> Growing up in the church, you know, it was, church was my life. I remember going to school and talking to different individuals and then the topic of church, Christianity would be brought up and it was so foreign when I would meet people that would not go to church. There was two things that were normal to me. One was going to church almost every day. And I also thought that every, every man had a tattoo. <laughs> that was just so normal, normal to be growing up. See, the Bible reads there in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, that to train up a child in the way that they, they shall go, that when they were old, they will not depart from it. Now, I want to talk to the parents here tonight, if that's okay. Make it a point, as long as your children are living in your household, to be in church. I, I don't understand how that became an option. <laughs> I meet some parents, and they say, oh, my 12-year-old my doesn't want to come to church. Well, make them. <laughs> right, Pastor? You know, I, know, I know our founders made, made you and... And your, and your siblings go to church, and that was a value. That Sunday was for the Lord. <laughs> we would not join any other sports that would consist of Sunday morning. Sunday morning, this is where we knew where we needed to be. Can I get an amen here tonight? So you tell your kids, <laughs> as long as you're staying under this roof, you are going to church. But I'm grateful that my parents brought me up that way. Now, at the age of eight years old, I took up the, the sport of boxing. And at first, uh, it was after seeing a, a famous fight in, in December of 2000. And I would bug my dad that I want to box. I want, I want to box. And uh, he did not see me as a boxer. He could not understand it because I didn't grow up in the streets. I didn't grow up in the neighborhood. I, I grew up in a good household. And we... Well, you're bringing me up in the things of God. And so how, how is this kid going to be fighting? So what my dad did first is that he took me 
instead of taking me to a gym because he did not want to get embarrassed, <laughs> he, he bought equipment there from Big Five, and he bought me a little bag and little gloves and saying, you know what, he's going to give it up after a couple weeks, and then that will be that. But I, ha- I hit that bag one week and two weeks and one month and two months, and finally, six months later, my dad finally convinced, you know what, I'll take you to a local boxing gym. So he took me there uh, in the city of South Omani, and I started at eight years old. And when I started, to be honest, I, I was not good, but I was persistent, and day in and day out, I would be in the gym, and then I started to develop more talent and more ability. And at the age of eight years old, I won my first national championship there in Augusta, Georgia. I believe we have a picture of a news article. It's picture number three. I think it says boxer. See, boxer 11 makes Mark in the ring. <laughs> and so I continued to uh, pursue the sport. I, I started to become more successful, and, and I was getting recognized uh, nationally. And by the age of 14 years old, I was a 15-time national champion. I was ranked number one in the U.S. in three different weight classes. I believe we have a picture of that as well. That's picture number four. So me with all my belts. That's me at 14 years old. All those different belts represent different national titles that I won. But during this time, my my parents were heavily involved in ministry. They 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 had a group there in I believe in Almani. They had a group in Almani, and I know we I know some people here are part of that group. And uh, you know my my parents they had a desire to go out and to to take a city. They were they were they were really committed. They were really committed. But in the midst of taking care of ministry, they neglected their marriage. They neglected their marriage, and, you know, it was ministry, ministry, ministry. But when we would come home, they would constantly have different arguments and different disagreements. And I remember being a young, a young boy and seeing them fighting, and after going into my mom's room crying and saying, Mom, our are you guys going to get a divorce? And she said, no, son, we'll never, we'll never get a divorce. And that comforted me. That said, you know, even in the midst, no matter how bad things got, that um, they were going to stick it out. But they, ne- they ne- continue to neglect their marriage. That's why it, it's so important to, to get involved in these different groups that we have available for the married couples, to go to the marriage getaway, because... If you're not taking care of your, mini- your marriage, you, will have, you won't have ministry. <laughs> I've heard it said that one of the hardest things is coming home and having a bad marriage and then trying to serve God's people. So the fights, the arguments continue to go on. And eventually I was, a, I was a sophomore in high school. I think about 15 years old. And I come home from school. And I, I noticed that my dad is there um, in his truck. He, he fell asleep. And I, and I was trying to wonder why he wasn't in the house. And he said, you know what, your, your mom has not came home from her appointment yet. And so, um, you know, I grew up in East L.A. Right? So I had to jump a fence. Many people from East L.A. Uh, used to jumping fences. <laughs> and so I, I jumped a fence and um, I was able to get into the house. And I go into my room not thinking much of it thinking my mom was going to come back later on uh, that evening. And my dad comes home to a letter saying that my mom had moved to another state and that she was filing for divorce. And um, he came into my, my room broken with my sisters. And my whole world crashed. I, I could not understand why this had to happen to our family. I, I got upset with God. I'm like, God, we're, we're doing your work. We're constantly taking in people from the streets. We're, we're constantly serving in ministry. We're, we're constantly passing out flyers. We're, we're constantly at the events. We're, we're constantly sowing seed. Why, why did this have to happen to our households? And slowly but surely... It caused me to slowly drift. But even during this time, I, I had the sport of boxing, so it was, a, it was an avenue for me to continue to, to take out my frustration. And during this time, I was 
trying to find fulfillment in, in different areas, such as relationships, um, go to parties, hang out with the wrong crowd, hang out with people that I knew I should not be hanging out with, but I just wanted to numb the pain. I, I, I put on a front, I put on a mask where it seemed like everything was all good, but inside I was hurting. And inside I was lost. My heart was far from God. Now I believe we have, now here's a picture of me, me and my crew, right? Me and the crew getting ready to go to a, to a party. That's picture number five. Nah, I'm just playing. That's Duke of Earl night. Come on. <laughs> everybody's, everybody's like, whoa. Crazy, right? Nah, I'm playing. That's not, that's, that was for Duke of Earl night, right? But, but, but church kids, the smart church kids know how to destroy the evidence. <laughs> to destroy the evidence so that their parents or family has no idea that they're living this alternative lifestyle. Alternative life. Now this, there was this one particular party. I was here locally in Southern California. And the party was jumping. The girls looked good. And I looked good. Come on. Right? The music, the drinks. And I was with another individual. And everybody was having the time of their life. But for some reason, I... I just wasn't having a good time. For some reason, I, I just not, I could not join the festivities. There was just something in me that I, I, just, I just knew I didn't belong there. And I knew where I should have been. And I was with my friend, and he, he was asking, what's going on? Why aren't you joining this party? Why, 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 get your back off out the wall. <laughs> Dance. Come on, right? <laughs> right? But I, I, just, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it, and I remember telling this person, I said, I don't belong here. I don't belong here. And I left immediately. And I went to my room, and, and, and I was broken there in my bedroom, and I cried out to God. I said, God, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry that I haven't been living the life that you called me to live. But if you can use anything, despite my hang-ups, my shortcomings, my insecurities, if you're able to use anything, here I am. And there in that bedroom, I was broken, and I rededicated my life over to the Lord. See, the Bible says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy, say joy. joy. Say joy. joy. Joy comes in the morning. I woke up that morning full of joy, couldn't wait, it was a Sunday, I couldn't wait to get into the house of God, to participate in the worship, to be broken in the altar, and to start committing my life completely over to, to the Lord. I fully surrendered. Now for those that are saved, I, I pray that you, you have come to a point into your life where you've given your life over to Jesus, but you're not going to take it back. When we give our lives over to Jesus, it's with no conditions. We're saying, God, I completely surrender everything over to you. You see, the enemy, he, he will try to remind you of all the good times you had in the world. He'll try to remind you how everyone knew your name, right? Like Cheers, a place where everyone knows your name, right? All of a sudden, everybody wanted to be around you. But they were only around you because you were buying drinks. Once the money ran out, there they went. Right? The, the enemy will remind you of the good times. But, that, but that's selective amnesia. You will not remember the times where you were miserable. Where you were miserable and you were hurting and you, you were lost. And nothing else brought the fulfillment that Jesus brought in your life. So I pray we have made that decision, that firm decision, saying, God, no matter what comes my way, I'm going to fight the good fight of faith. That I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to throw in the towel, but that I'm going to serve you the rest of my life. Can I get an amen here tonight? So my boxing career at this time continued to progress, and uh, I was a candidate to represent the United States and different countries internationally. And I turned pro at the age of 19. 
Now, when I turned pro, I, I got the attention of uh, many boxing legends. I know we have a picture with me and uh, Oscar De La Hoya. I think that's picture number six. The golden boy. How many like the golden boy? Right, the golden boy, East L.A. The likes of Oscar De La Hoya. Also, we have Sugar Shane Mosley. He promoted one of my fights. Look at that. It's me and Sugar Shane. We actually sparred earlier that day, and he could not believe my age or couldn't believe that I was so much lighter than him for I was so advanced for my, for, for my age and my weight. And I turned pro in October of 2011. And I know a pastor was able to be there, Pastor Phil, and I fought there in the Club Nokia there right across from Staples Center. And it was, it was a big thing because, you know, I know when Pastor started the gang in 1993, that there was, there were, we were believing that God was going to raise up professional athletes in our ministry. Now, we had professional athletes come be a part of our ministry, but we were believing that professional athletes were going to get brought up in our ministry, that we're going to have the values of victory outreach, and that they were going to proclaim the gospel everywhere, everywhere that they went. So October 2011, I, I fulfilled my dream of becoming a professional fighter, and I believe that that facility... Had about a thousand people, but we filled up that people. With, we filled up that facility with over 500 people from Victory Outreach. <laughs> people from all over Southern California, Northern California. They they came out to support. I used to wear I used to wear the VO logo on my shorts, and I, I used to love when people were asking me, "What does that stand for? <laughs> what is VO?" <laughs> but like, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> We're inner city ministry since 1967. We go to the places no one wants to go and we reach people that no one else wants to reach. Now we're all over the world and now God is raising up a, a set, another generation that did not come from that background. But they still have a heart for the lost, still have a, lot, a heart for the hurting, for the down and outer, for the misfit of society. And all of a sudden the boxing world knew about VO. They knew about Victory Outreach. But now I'm sure, I'm sure Golden Boy Promotions, I, I'm sure that they were going through some changes or when they were going through the budget of what the revenue that came in that evening, that even though we had all these ticket sales, that there was no one at the bars. <laughs> they're probably thinking, we have all these people, but no one's drinking. <laughs> because they're victory outreach people. Come on. We're Christians. We're not sipping saints. Come on, somebody. But we even made an impact there to Golden Boy Promotions. Now, I continue to have success. Uh, I continue to pursue the sport. And in 2015, I won the California State Featherweight Championship. They're 126 pounds. I know we have a picture. That's picture number eight. I know some people were here or there where I won the California State title. It's awesome. Uh, tremendous accomplishment. It was beautiful to be able to celebrate it with many of my church family. Now, as I continued and I was getting offers for bigger fights and bigger opportunities, I was, I was involved in the gang. I was involved in the church. I was involved in ministry. I was involved in high school ministry. Where Pastor Phil gave me a challenge in a local high school in Ontario. He said, there's a need in this high school and they need somebody to go in every Tuesday to, to you know, speak to these young people. And I said, yes. I said, yes. And so my desire for ministry continue to grow. And my passion began to shift where I would be in the gym, but I'd be thinking about the church. <laughs> I would be running, but I would feel bad that I couldn't be a part of the gang meeting. <laughs> and, and I felt a tugging in my heart where, where God wanted me to get more involved in the ministry. And I remember telling it to the people around me, and, and they could not understand they could not understand why I was making this decision to hang up the gloves. They, they could not comprehend it. They said, well, you, you, can, you can do that after. You can do that after. You can do that after your, your boxing career. You, you'll still have a lot of time for that. Ministry will always be there. But I knew that God had called me now. And I was in a crossroads. I was in a crossroads of who was I going to be. I believe God would have used me either way. I, I do. But I had to make a decision. And God gave me a promise. He said, son, you're going to be a voice of this generation. But put, put your life in my hands. 
So I said yes. I said yes, and at times, to be honest, it hasn't been easy. <laughs> Especially when, you, when I watch guys that I beat, <laughs> and they're making millions. They're making stacks of cash. <laughs> and the only stacks I see are the, the stack of chairs. <laughs> Stacks of cash, and the only stacks I see are the stacks for a pancake breakfast that we got to raise finances to get people to winter retreat. I felt like pastor with the Twinkie. I was like, at times of discouragement, it's like, man, I, did I make the right decision? You know, sometimes you want to get the gloves, and he's like, I can still come back. I'm still young. That's, that's why I'm done. Fight for hope. I'm done. I retire on top. Come on, somebody. Then enough. But professional boxers, their payday is after the fight. That's, that's, that's when they get paid. No matter if they win or lose, they get paid. But payday for me is when I see young people giving their lives over to the Lord. And we have picture, picture number nine. Payday for me is when I see young people answering the call of God and being everything that God has called them to be. When I see young people rising up and being preachers and leaders, sending them to the UTC, seeing people go to different cities and different nations, that, that's payday for me. That says, you know what, that's worth all the investment. That's worth all the time. That's worth everything I've given because I see other people being everything that God has called them to be. That's payday. It makes it all worth it. That's, that's what us as leaders we live for. We, we live to see people rise up and fulfill the call that God has placed upon their lives. To reach their full potential and to be the champion that God had called them to be. Now I'm involved in the gang. I'm one of the leaders there. And God's doing great things in this now generation. Now I, now I get the privilege to, to serve under pastor and the team here. And I, I love what God is doing in our church. Mother Church, revival is here. Revival is here. We are seeing people taking their place, putting their hands to the plow. The first, second, and third wave are all coming together as a mighty army that God is using for such a time as this. I love what God is doing in our church. Now about six months ago, almost six months ago, I got married. Come on, I got married in the church. It's picture number 10. Got married in the church. We did it the right way. We sought our pastor's approval. We went through the steps. We, we dated for about three years. I made her wait a little, a little long. <laughs> but it's worth the wait, why, Alexis? It's worth, you know. Got married in the church. And I'm so excited for what God's going to do in our lives. I'm so, so, and I know that God's going to use us in a mighty way. Now I'm here to let you know tonight, and I'm here to declare to you that there is a champion inside of you. But we all need to fight the good fight of faith. If Edgar, you could bring that prop up. There's a champion inside of you. There's a warrior. Yeah, right there. You can place it down. Now a champion, a true fighter, has to come to a point in their life where no matter what comes their way, they answer the bell. Your neighbor say, answer the bell. You may feel like you're down and out, but you answer the bell. Man of God, woman of God, answer the bell. Be the champion that God has called you to be. No matter what life throws your way, you answer the bell. Worship team, make their way. There are some champions here in this room where you got to rise up. 
and you say, God, I fully surrender. I'm going to have the heart. I'm going to have the determination that no matter what comes my way, I'm going to answer the bell. I'm going to stay in the fight. I'm going to fight the good fight of faith. Your kid might not be saved right now. Stay in the fight. All hell might be breaking loose at home. Stay in the fight. You're fighting out. You might be in a financial situation. Stay in the fight. Because there are people, there are people in our world that are looking for an answer. And we know that answer. That answer is Jesus Christ. Jesus and God is able to save anybody and change anybody. You see, we're victory outreach. That means that we, we walk with victory. We don't walk defeated. We don't walk with our heads down. We walk with our heads up and our eyes up knowing that no matter what comes our way, God's in our corner. That if he is for us, who could be against us? <clears throat> there comes a point in the lives of every individual where they got to make the decision to be the man, to be the woman, that they were destined to be. See, time is of the essence. The Bible says life is but a vapor. It's here today and gone tomorrow. See, in our opening text, the Apostle Paul's mission, it was almost up. And I read a quote not too long ago from Pastor Phil. I believe our pastor said this. See, there's no greater thing than instilling faith in the next generation. And that's what the Apostle Paul was doing with his disciple Timothy. He said, Timothy, man of God, fight the good fight of faith. We press, we fight, we finish. We have a burden, and that burden causes us to build and to battle. Every hand lifted in this place. The worship music sing a song. Lift up your hands. Oh, person here where you've been battling and you've been wrestling and you've been fighting the wrong fight and it's time for you to stop playing games and to surrender your life so everybody has every eyes closed Whether you've never given your life over to the Lord or at one time you were serving Him, but for whatever reason you got distracted, you got diverted, well, tonight's your night.
this night, this theme was specifically for you to get back on track. So if that's you, everybody has bowed your eyes closed. You're not doing this to me, I'm nobody. You're doing this to the Lord. And if that's you, and you're ready to make that decision to live the life God has called you to live, to fulfill your destiny, and to be that champion. If that's you, lift up your hand. If that's you. I see that hand. I see that hand. Praise the Lord. I see that hand. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Anyone else? Anyone else? You're ready. Now at this time, what we want to do, and if you're serious and you mean business, I want you to come to this altar. And she said, I'm tired of being tired. I'm tired of doing things my own way. I want to put my life in the potter's hand. If that's you, I want you to come up. Come up, that's you. Don't be embarrassed. Come on. No, I see some hands. Okay. Even if it's just one, it's okay. Come on, give them a clap as they make their way up. Come on. Come on, my sister. Come on, it's okay. Come on, come on. You brought somebody with you. You're with somebody. Make sure they have them come with you. Come on, that's you. Only for those that are tired. For those that want to surrender their lives over to the that's you. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. harvest time now I know there may be someone else I'll wait for you Pastor Steve you say I'll wait for you you'll thank me when you see me in heaven if that's you as the music as the worship goes and you want to join this altar call you want to get saved or you want to rededicate your life to the only for those people that's your call step toward God, he makes 10 steps toward you. I've been doing ministry for over 30 years now, and I've been raised in the ministry, and I've been under the best evangelist, like a Nikki Cruz. He says, give it a little bit more time. So we're going to sing it one more time. And don't reject the Holy Spirit. He's not, God is knocking at your door. Don't reject him. You never know. You're not, you may not have another chance. Life is of the essence. It's urgent. 
that we respond when the Holy Spirit is tugging at your heart. So we're going to sing it one more time. We're going to have Xavier pray the sinner's prayer. Sing it one more time. Come now. Come. Come on. If you're not sure, come. Come on. I give you my soul. Don't be hesitant. Come now. Lord, I give you my soul. purpose, a sense of destiny, and a sense of knowing that you are in his hands. And those of you at the altar, I, I got a text the other day from one of, one of our pastors that had Nikki Cruz, and he sent me the picture of his father in the arms of Nikki Cruz, Evangelist Nikki Cruz. He says, my dad gave his life to the Lord. He said this, watch. I've never seen my dad cry, but he was weeping at the altar. God wants to save you today. He wants to save souls. Whether you're younger or older, it doesn't matter as long as your heart's open. The only time it's too late is when you have your last breath. Then it's, it's too late. It's, it's gone. The Bible says life is like a vapor. You're here today, you're gone tomorrow. So the most important decision you can make is giving your heart to Jesus, to really just surrender. Say, God, I can't do this anymore. I'm tired. I'm tired of being, live my life the way I live it. I give you my heart, I give you my mind, I give you my soul. Xavier, come and say the prayer. It's called the sinner's prayer. And mean it from your own heart. And then God will help you through it, and our leaders will help you through it. Eyes closed, lift up your hands. Say, Dear Jesus, I say, Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, but I also know that you died for me. And you not only died for me, but you rose on the third day. Father, come into my life and take complete control. Give me the strength and give me the faith to serve you the rest of my life. Be my Savior and be my Lord. Let me be the champion that you've called and you destined to be. Say a quick prayer. Father God, I thank you. I thank you, Father, for these individuals that, make the, that made the best decision of their life. I pray, Lord, that you will continue to, to strengthen them, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that they will continue to fight the good fight of faith day in and day out, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you will not only save them, but you'll keep them, Lord. And that you'll use them to be the light in a dark world, to be a light in their generation, to their friends and their family, Lord. I pray, Lord, that they will do great exploits for your honor and for your glory. I pray the blood of Jesus upon their lives, Lord. Let them stand firm. Let them be strong. Let them be built on a sure foundation. Let them be planted by the trees of living water where they will not wither, but that they will be fruitful. 
Oh, I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father, for your beautiful presence. I thank you, Father, for what you're doing here at this altar. And I thank you, Father, for these salvations. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's get the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Is it the Lord I have? Hallelujah. Now, let me ask you a question. Yeah. I was going to say, what do they do next? Tell them what to do next. So right now, we would love to have you right here at our Welcome Center. See that handsome young man right there with the light? You can make your way. If you got saved, go. And we have some counselors there. And if you, if you brought somebody, somebody's here at the altar, wait for them. Wait for them. You could join them. We have some refreshments. We also have a Bible for you. And so we would love. Let me just say this. It, it's a time to rejoice. You know that all the angels in heaven rejoice over one sinner that repents. So as Christians on this earth, we could be happy, excited about our friends, our loved ones, our, those that we don't even know yet. You have joined the family of God, and you are in his hand today. And you're not going to be lost no more because you are in his hands. But we need to give you instruction how to stay in the will of God. Okay, so go this direction. That guy right there with the big old beard with the bright light. Just for a few minutes, okay? Go over there and counselors lead them that way. I want to sing a song that's joyful, upbeat, river. I like the river song. Let's get into the river. The river like on this stage. Step in. Come on, step into the river. Everybody, sing with us. Somebody get excited. There is a river where goodness flows. There is a fountain that drowns sorrow. Listen, 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 listen. Okay, I just got back from Panama this past week. I'm telling you, revival's taking place. They get into it. I'm not going to quit this song until I see you guys get into it. If you're walking out, you're leaving early, nah, that's not what we do in Victory Outreach. We leave on a high note. So if you got the Holy Ghost inside of you, if you feel the Spirit story inside of you if you want to come up here for the last three minutes of the service let's get our dance on get your joy on let's worship the lord like we really know him come on Deep, 
somebody for Sunday to bring them to Sunday service, okay? For 9 or 11, I am, me and my son Jordan, we're going to be traveling tomorrow to Phoenix for Holy Ghost Thursday. Jordan's going to do 10 minutes of fire before my brother on tomorrow night. And then on Friday, I close it out, the second speaker, coming back Friday afternoon. Then we have the grand, what did we call it? The, the championship of the softball team, which Jordan's on that team. I don't know where he's at. He's probably over in the batting, batting practice right now. I don't know what he's doing. But we want you guys to come. What, 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 what park is it again? Anybody know? Ayala Park at 730? Is that right? Okay, so recently I went to the Astros-Dodger game where they were just heckling the Astros like crazy. Dodger Stadium, 52,000 people. We're not going to heckle the op opposition, but we want to cheer on, cheer on our team on Friday night. We want to win this thing, okay? So if you have time to come out, be there, support your team, Victory Arts Chino, the Mother Church, and then Sunday, say Sunday, I'm bringing somebody with me to church. We're going to fill this place, 9 a.m., 11 a.m. God bless you. Have a good night. God bless you.